material for forever. Uh, so today I'm not here with any research paper. I would be only sharing my experiences of past two decades as a teacher of English literature and uh, how literature has influenced me as a person and how literature has the capacity of social change. So basically, I would be talking about literature and social change, how literature can be instrumental in creating a more positive and a more inclusive and a flexible society. I would be talking about that. And uh, I would be also talking about responsible literature. Before I begin that, I would like to introduce the idea of witness literature. You know, in the Nobel Prize speech of uh, Nadine Godlimer, she introduced the idea of witness literature. You know, in the process of social change, in the process of any court, in the court of law, the uh, witness plays a very important and a major role. Similarly, in the process of social change, in introducing a more positive and inclusive society, a writer plays the role of a witness. So as a writer, as a creative writer, and a teacher, and a folklorist, I have been only striving, I have been attempting to be a witness to social change. So I would be talking about that. Before we go there, uh, the current scenario of the country leading to students' unrest, a lot of political chaos, so much of the around and communal discontent, dysfunctional environment in the educational institutions and the anxiety of the general public for a revolutionary change in the existing system. All these things have created a food for thought in teachers like me and you. We are thinking forward, we're looking forward to creating a more inclusive society, a more positive society through teaching and pedagogy. I would be giving hints on that. Uh, look at the National Education Policy 2020 document, the 20, the 67 pages document on the, you can find that on the website. The government of India has introduced that in the year 2020, and we are trying to introduce all of them to our educational institutions. So I would talk about here in what capacity I have been a part of the National Education Policy. If you look at the document, you will see that the word language has been used more than 100 times which means the government of India is giving a lot of importance to languages and literatures. Literature, the teachers of literature like you, you and me, we all are not here to produce something tangible. We do not produce some products, some things. So then what is our contribution here? We change the mindset of people. We create an optimistic and an inclusive society, a civilization where people are more than willing to learn new things, to create a knowledge system. Mm -hmm. So in that, in the ed national education policy, it talks about uh, family languages, regional languages, local languages, state languages, and national language, and then international languages. So that is where we have to communicate between different languages. We have to contribute by a collaboration between different languages. Our family languages, which are also somewhat connected to our folklore, to our tribal literatures and languages, starting from there to going to our state languages and to the national and then international levels through translation and pedagogy, through teaching. Probably this is where our contribution as teachers, folklorists and poets and creative writers should come forward. Uh, I joined Indira Gandhi National Open University, the world's largest university in the year 2006. And then we do a need assessment survey. When I did the need assessment survey regarding the possibility of introducing new academic programs, I saw that we have British literature, American literature, Canadian studies, and we have all kinds of subjects in our syllabus, but we did not have anything like Indian folk literature which is so very important for us. Our tribal languages and literatures, our indigenous cultural heritages, and our translation studies, our folklore, our oral studies, oral literatures, they have been so important, which we are missing in our pedagogy and teaching and our research. So that is where I introduced PG Diploma in Folklore and Culture Studies in my university, the world's largest university in the year 2008 and nine. I'm the the course, the program had overwhelming, overwhelming response from the students and more than 14,000 students have come to take that kind of a subject. And then a couple of years ago, I converted 
the diploma program to a complete MA in folklore and culture studies. If you go to the university website and you check program guide of MAFCS, you will find that we have a complete 64 credits MA program in folklore and culture studies. That is where I have contributed as a teacher, a researcher, and a folklorist, and a translator, and a poet. I have taken a whole lot of literature from different parts of the country, from Kashmir to Kanyakumari. And also, I have taken folk, folk literatures from Germany, France, Russia, and from America, from Latin American women's literature, Cinderella folk tales from France. I have taken Arabian Nights. I have taken all of them, the world folklores, and created a pool, a collaboration between the world folklores and the Indian folk literature and created this very important MA program. So this is how probably in my squirrel, in my small little way, I have contributed to the national education policy inst instructions that folk literature, cultural studies, cultural studies and language studies should come up in a big way. So that is where I have tried to contribute. And also I am glad to share here that a couple of years ago, I introduced a BA course in Odia literature. Though I'm qualified in English, my basic training is in English. And somehow my thinking language has also become English because of teaching for more than two decades in English language and literature. But my roots are in Orissa. And I have designed a BA course in Odia literature where I have taken Bhimavoi, Fakir Mohan Senapati, and all the seminal writers of Odia literature. And also in our MA English, MEG 16, Indian Folk Literature, I have taken Manoj Das, Padmasri Manoj Das, Padmasri Jayant Mahapatra, Sita Khan, Mahapatra Ramakan, Tratha, all and so many, you know, uh, Gopinath Mohanty and so many Odia writers, I have translated them or I have got them translated to English and I have introduced them as a part of our MA English so that Students from the international forums are reading our Odia literature through translation and pedagogy. So this is how, you know, as a teacher of English literature or as a teacher of literature for that matter, you have a major role to play here. Like Dr. Palashri is a teacher of Odia literature, but the way she conducts her classes in English, sometimes I see those on, on her social media network and I see that she's trying to, or most of you are trying to be multilingual. So multilingualism is the key here starting with our folk languages and tribal languages, coming to Odia, Assamese, Bangla, and all our Indian languages to German, French, Russian, and all those international languages. Being the former director of the School of Foreign Languages, I had the opportunity of working with nine foreign languages. That is when I tried to create a collaboration between the different Indian languages and the foreign languages. And got so many Indian literatures and languages translated to English. You know, uh, the other day I was reading uh, Thomas Hardy's Jude the Obscure, the book, the novel Jude the Obscure. Uh, Jude has been deprived from education and he has become an obscure character. And then how the novelist Thomas Hardy gives him a way out. Somehow I could connect that to our educational system. Looking at Igno kind of universities or even your kind of university, look at Kalahandi, a place like Kalahandi where you have introduced a university with all kinds of academic programs. So this is primarily giving the marginal to the mainstream, taking the marginal to the mainstream. You are trying to take the subaltern, the marginal, the people who are deprived from the mainstream education, you are taking them to the mainstream. So. We are a people's university, like you are also a people's university. We believe in inclusive education, non-discriminatory education, which is very classicist, very inclusive, very non-ageist. In our university, the students are from 18 years to 80 years. The most senior most student of IGNO is nearing 100. So we are a non-ageist society. We are creating that kind of inclusive educational system through our kind of universities and then you are truly intersectional we are catering to the needs of intersectionality we are not taking any particular section we are looking we are taking students from all the three genders male female and the third gender in igno the education for the third gender the lgbtq is free we have we give them free education so we are dealing with intersectionality. We are not dealing with any particular or privileged section of the society. And then intellectual. 
the kind of academic programs, courses that we are giving are truly, truly intellectual. We have more than 280 academic programs. You take a name, we have those kind of programs, starting with elitist courses like MA English, PhD English, to different courses like in Sanskrit and, and in Hindi and in science, technology, social sciences, agriculture, sociology, philosophy. We have all kinds of courses. Even we have some of our courses around shoe making, the leather making, the shoe making courses, beautician courses. So basically empowering people to get a vocation. Even our academic programs are offered in the Tihar jail. The other day I had an opportunity to visit the Tihar jail and I met the jail inmates and they are studying the material, study material with all dedication. They are submitting their assignments on time so that once their tenure in the jail is over, they can come out as better people through education and they can get into the civil society and contribute to the society with some kind of a profession for themselves. So this is what I call inclusive education, getting into the needs of the society, giving education to the underprivileged, to the marginal. And then uh, knowledge production. We believe in knowledge production. You know, there was a time when all research was intradisciplinary. Intradisciplinary means studying within your own discipline, like reading stories of Fakir Monsenapati as stories. But then slowly we are going to interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary and transdisciplinary knowledge systems which means multidisciplinary is creating a new knowledge system by taking into consideration the knowledge systems of different disciplines. We are doing that. And transdisciplinary, which means looking at one discipline from the perspective of another, looking at Odia literature from the perspective of the European studies, looking at European literatures or American literatures from the perspective of anthropology. So this is how, you know, interchangeability or interdisciplinarity. We are looking at that kind of an education system so that we are responsible towards knowledge production and we are creating a fearless mind of the student without narrow domestic walls like Tagore would say where the mind is without fear we are creating a fearless mind for the student and without any borders borders of age class gender race we are trying to avoid those things where there are no narrow domestic walls but everything is about inclusive education system so this is where I would say that a teacher of literature can contribute towards creating that kind of an open mind of a student, of you know, a researcher. And uh, uh, teaching through the gender parity or gender equality, there should be no gender bias in our education system. The other day, I went to some university uh, which is dealing with uh, school education. And I looked at the study material that they had produced. And I saw that in the study material, they had illustrations, they had pictures. And uh, unfortunately, 85% or 90% of the pictures were of male children. Only 10% of the pictures were of the female, of the girls. And wherever there was a male child in any school book, the boy would be you know, doing archery, the boy would be riding a bike, and the boy would be driving a vehicle and whenever there is a girl the girl would be sitting in the kitchen with the mother and helping her in the kitchen so we are creating that kind of a you know a gender stereotype in our education system even through the illustration and through the pictures so in our kind of universities in the departments of art and culture in the school of visual and performing arts that we have we train our students to create study material in which there is gender equality in which the number of illustrations of boys and girls should be 50-50, should be equal. And also I saw that all the children in the school books were fair-skinned. No one is dark-skinned. So that way, we are giving an impression to our children that people should be like this. People should be fair-skinned and good-looking, so-called good-looking. But what is good-looking? I really don't know the definition of somebody who looks good. To me, Actually, everything that is inclusive and positive looks good. Look at Lord Jagannath. We are coming from Jagannath Sanskriti. Lord Jagannath is pitch black, but he is the most beautiful God of the world. So Lord Jagannath is teaching us inclusive, inclusivity towards the dark skin. And Lord Jagannath doesn't have limbs. His legs and hands are not there. So he is creating an idea in the mind of the devotee that if the Lord of the universe has incomplete limbs, which means people who are disabled, people who are 
physically challenged they are equally strong and powerful like you or anyone for that matter so this kind of inclusivity towards the disabled to the differently able to the physical disabilities to the mental disabilities and to the different skin colors and towards different genders male female and the transgender the third gender lgbtq that kind of inclusivity if we are creating through our education and literature then probably we are contributing positively towards a better society what i'm trying to tell you is about any national education policy is this is most futuristic national education policy is not declining is not denying you to do anything rather it's only adding on adding new ideas for you talk about more languages talk about more inclusivity you know initially in the world there were six lakh languages when long back six lakh languages and now there are only the only 6000 languages so what happened to all those languages then the languages died a natural death due to the lack of any kind of documentation archiving so this is where the role of teachers of literature like today my topic is responsible literature so the teachers of literature and language this is where your role will come you have to document the dying cultures and the dying languages when i was doing my ma program in folklore and culture studies for the university i had an opportunity to visit different places to go to different dying languages groups and take an interview with them it was very really very difficult for me to uh, convince those people that your language is endangered and it's a dying language and it's time that we are documenting those people are not ready to accept that their culture or language is endangered so your role is very very challenging you have to go to them you have to convince them that your language needs to be documented in one of uh, uh, the villages in odisha uh, there were only two last speakers of a language only two old people who were like 80 plus their children were all speaking in english and hindi and odia or all other languages but no one was talking there that was a tribal language and it was very difficult for me to convince the two of them to help me to document those languages and it took 6 months and within the 6 months one one of them died one of them passed away so there was just one person and i recorded so many music song so many songs and so many stories of that language in that particular tribal language and then i got it translated to odia and then to english and i made it a part of the study material so this is how probably the dying and the endangered languages and cultures can be documented now we look at our indigenous cooking system cuisines which we call folk cuisine the indigenous spices masale ghar ke masale so you know slowly we, our children are going to uh, all those uh, pizza and burger and all kinds of you know fast food culture is entering our society in a big way and our families are believing more in a quick fix meal rather than getting in the indigenous cooking systems so probably this is where we have to document the indigenous cuisine and look at the folk medicines you know ayurveda yunani kind of medicines we believe in quick fix medical system also today there is a headache just pop a pill but then our systems which is you know which our systems which are so very indigenous and so very rooted they teach us systems that are everlasting so probably this is where we have to document those folk medicines so folk medicines folk cuisine folk music you know you go to coke studio kind of retro and ultra modern music systems you find a lot of folk music as a fusion as a polyphony a polyphonic fusion music is coming up so this is where we are giving importance to folk music as well and you go to folk dance systems you know go to contemporary dance you will find lot of dance ins inspired by the folk dance systems folk theater the contemporary theater systems are also inspired by our folk theaters varnam varnam you know varnam varnam is an adaptation of carnatic folk theater from shakespeare shakespearean tragedies are converted to carnatic folk theater in varnam varnam i have written a couple of chapters on dandanata pala dasgatya and all of them they are slowly dying they are dying cultures people are going to theaters to metro and you know to to watch movies by paying a fortune we can pay 1000 rupees to buy a ticket for a movie but then people are reluctant to go for the preservation and documentation of those dying cultures so 
in ma in folk and culture studies i have written chapters on dandanatya pala and dasgathya kind of dying cultural heritages otherwise the day will come when our children will not even hear those words they will forget those things at least by documenting those as a part of our educational system by bringing folklore to the table by bringing folk literature to the university tables by introducing folk literature as a part of our ma programs probably we are contributing in the documentation of those indigenous dying cultural heritages those knowledge systems i'm glad to inform you here that if you go to the ugc net syllabus and you type folk literature you will find a complete syllabus of ugc net on folk literature and i am instrumental in the creation and the maintenance of that every year lot of people lot of students after completion of ma english or ma anthropology ma history ma sociology and also ma english lot of students are writing that you just did not examination on folk literature and after writing that exam they are getting accommodated they are getting placements in various institutions like my university you go to different universities in india today slowly people are going folkloristic people are going to folklore people are going back to our cultural heritages or you know film industries or national museums even medicals even hospitals in this ma folklore and culture studies program my senior students are 70 plus and they are doctors from different hospitals from saptarjung hospital from aims doctors are my students so one of the doctors from aims he did a project for the program a comparative analysis of allopathy medicine and homeopathy and uh, ayurvedic medicine and unani he made a collaborative a comparative research on that and reading his project was a learning experience for me i was going through his project and i learned so much out of that teaching is a two way process it should not mean that only the teacher is teaching and the learner is listening to him or her rather it should be two way you know bipolar you you should be you know in a dialogue in in a discussion with your students so this is how by teaching folklore and culture or by teaching languages i have come across and wonderful people excellent cultural heritages and every day has become a day of learning for me the pro in the process of teaching in fact teaching has actually been a process of learning for me i don't go to my classrooms only to teach i go to the classrooms in an open mind to learn from my students because they come from such interesting such varied backgrounds with interesting knowledge systems and we contribute to each other and if it doesn't uh, uh, you know say no to technology i'm a very very tech savvy person though i'm a folklorist i'm a poet but i'm extremely tech savvy i try to create uh, knowledge systems and document them and archive them with the help of information and technology never say no to information and technology and never say no to the powerful languages like english my mother tongue is odia i speak odia bangla assam is hindi and a couple of foreign languages but english has empowered me so probably this is where from trans through translation i am empowered to translate like dr palishri patnaik mentioned that i am translating upendra bhanja now and it is really taking a lot of my energy every morning i wake up at 5 o'clock and i translate upendra bhanja because once i get into my days activities understanding upendra bhanja may be difficult for me so that kind of mental exercise i do by translating upendra bhanja and probably in near future the book will be published and then i will be in a position to take upendra bhanja kind of a poet a seminal poet from odisha to an international forum only through translation if we don't translate if we don't we say no to english then we can never get out of our narrow regional boundaries so we have to say yes to languages i'm not saying english we have to say yes to different languages i learn tribal languages i can speak a couple of tribal languages also so languages empower us translation empowers us i have a research paper published translation as power so translation doesn't mean taking lexicon after lexicon from one language to another rather translation empowers you and me to to bring home the culture to create a cultural exchange system to create a cultural heritage in which cultural exchanges are possible through the handshake of different languages so this is way you know the new education policy during the pandemic it empowered us to go more tech savvy many people who never understood 
Zoom or Google Meet or these kind of platforms for that matter. Now they have come forward and everyone is doing online examination, online teaching. It has been extremely challenging, I'm sure, but still people are doing. And the role of distance, digital and online education has become very, very important. And the, the students, initially they faced big challenges, but now slowly they are trying to get accommodated to that. The bigger challenge was for teachers rather than students. Students are mostly youngsters, so they are more tech savvy. But it was a big challenge for a lot of teachers. Even today, it's a challenge for most of the teachers uh, basically, literature teachers to, to get into technology and teach. But somehow, I'm glad that people are doing it. And for that, YouTube-based proof of the education system is very, very important. We can record our lectures, make them free access YouTubes, and send them to the students to, to access and understand different subjects. And then emphasis on the tangible and the intangible cultural heritages is very, very important as a teacher of literature. Now, what is tangible? Something that you can touch, something that you can feel. Like, so one thing that I can touch. So this is a part of the tangible system. And intangible system is, you know, copyrights or the method of teaching, gharana, music gharana, you know. So passing on your knowledge systems to the next generation is passing on your, your intangible cultural systems. So the tangible systems keep your, your society or civilization intact, but the intangible cultural systems are even more important through which we train the next generation. The method of training, teaching, like in Odisha, there are so many Pipli Chandua work or you know those silver jewelry from Odisha, Sambalpuri clothes from Odisha. So many tangible cultural systems are there which will die unless we train our next ge generations with those. We have to pass on the knowledge. So passing on that knowledge system is intangible cultural heritage system. This is where study of folklore comes in. You know, there is a regional school of, there is a very rigid school of thought which says that anything oral is folklore and anything documented no more remains folklore. The folklore element is lost. A very rigid school of thought says that. But I would say no to that. I belong to a very flexible school of thought where I have taken material from our interesting, rich literatures from different states of India, from Kashmir to Kanyakumari, and I have taken out the usage of folk elements in different texts like Pathir Panchali, like Gopirat Mohandas Poroja, like Chimmin by T. Shankar Pillai, when the world was young by Barrier Elwin, those kind of interesting te texts where folk elements are there. They are not basically oral literatures, they are documented, but folk elements are present. So I have taken those systems and I have put them as a part of our course material for our MA Folklore and also MA English, MEG 16, MA English. I have put them as a part of that. And those systems are taught to the students today. And uh, we have to give simple and short assignments to our students, which are very, very creative, engaging, and innovative. As teachers of literature, we have to consider that the, uh, you know, the concentration of the students is slowly changing because of so many distractions. There are OTTs, there is Netflix, what not. You know, people, our children are getting so easily distracted. So keep their mind engaged. Maybe 15 minutes videos or 15 minutes engaging lectures or 30 minutes engaging lectures in very, very innovative ways, giving them examples can be created by the teachers of literature with an emphasis on brain based learning, something that stimulates the brain and focus on science and technology for sure. And then digital infrastructures can be created and virtual laboratories can be labs can be created. For English language teachers, creation of a lab is very, very important. And, you know, technology-based solutions to the students' problems, like solving the problems on the online media, can also be created. This is what, you know, uh, uh, COVID has taught us, that nothing is inaccessible, nothing is impossible. Only 17% of the English medium schools and 64% of the Hindi medium schools and 83% of the Hindi and vernacular medium schools today are accessing information and technology. So this is where your role as a teacher of literature comes in. You have to look at the ABC of education. A, 
the 10 hindi speaking states make, they, are, they are supposed to make all correspondence in hindi while making the content available in the constitutionally approved languages i repeat the abc of new educational policy basically for literature teachers the 10 hindi speaking states in india uh, they may make all the correspondence in hindi but they should make the content available in our constitutionally approved languages and b is punjab maharashtra gujarat they correspond in hindi while making the content available in all local languages as well as english and c northeast india south india east india like our Odisha state they may correspond in english while making the content available in regional local languages and hindi languages this is what nep advocates as i already told you that the 67 pages document of nep it emphasizes the word language more than 200 times so probably this is where we should contribute collaborate and think about <coughs> creation of a knowledge society through translation through pedagogy through teaching literature doesn't mean only teaching the stories which are already told by the great writers, the great masters, rather to theorize those, to teach critical theory to the students. Unfortunately, in Indian universities, mostly even I have seen in my state, in Odisha universities, students shy away from theory. They don't want to learn critical theory. So the teachers have to play, literature teachers have to play a very important role to teach theory to the students. Post-colonialism, post-modernism, you know, gender studies, Masculinity studies, LGBTQ studies, new historicism, cultural materialism, those kind of important and interesting literary theories may be taught in the classrooms in a very, very dilute and in a very simple way so that the students can adapt to the knowledge systems in a national and international level. And uh, with this, I would stop here and I would like to take questions and discussions from the audiences. If you have anything to ask me, to discuss with me as a teacher, uh, teaching uh, in uh, conventional mode as well as distance mode universities for more than two decades. I have experiences with both. I have taught in conventional universities and I have taught in distance education, which is actually dual mode. Our MPhil PhD courseworks are face to face. Every day I'm taking classes with the MPhil classes, PhD classes. And our BA and MA programs are distance mode. I'm taking those classes from the studio. So the Granderson and Gyanwani modes. So I have experiences with classroom as well as the pilot studies through information and technology. And uh, online teaching, SOEM and SOEM provide digital infrastructure teaching I have been doing. And I have been training the trainers. Train the trainers is very, very interesting and important. So I'm training the academic counselors. Uh, we have thousands and thousands of academic counselors with us. I'm training them and then uh, I'm making the content that I'm designing available in different languages. I'm looking at digital storehouses. I'm looking at content creation and dissemination. I'm looking at the standards of online learning every now and then we have self assessing academic programs where we look at the standards of our online learning. I look at the blended modes of education system. I create dedicated units for digital education. I emphasize on the tangible and the intangible cultural heritages of India and the world by being a folklorist. And uh, also as a poet, uh, like Dr. Patnaik has already published, she has already told that I have uh, 17 books and two are under publication and two are, I'm writing two on, on uh, important and interesting subjects on translation studies. So through my creative writing also, I'm trying to uh, create uh, a society where there is inclusivity, gender equality, and uh, there is a lot of interest in my readers for accepting uh, the marginal. So this is how I have been trying to contribute in my small little way as a teacher of English literature. So now I leave it open mm -hmm. to all of you to ask me a few questions. If you have I think uh, uh, Mrs. Chandra Mitra has a question. Uh, you please go ahead, ma'am. Um, Samastanku namaskar Nandini bahut dhanyavaad apano question neba pai rajji More question, more question how ji apano jo upendra bhajan karo anubad karo chanti. Saita suni kiri mo bahut khushi halli. Kintu she to gote alga kala ra literature. She anubad re kete lost hai jiba mane anubad a anusrujan kaho chanti. And then मु 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 भाबुची केमिति सेटा अपन ताकु इनकॉर्पोरेट करबे एति कहि 
ଗୋଟେ ଛୋଟ ଜିନିଷ ମ୍ୟାମ ପ୍ରଫେସର ନନ୍ଦିନୀ ଆଇ ୱିଲ ମେନସନ ହିୟର ମିସେସ ଚନ୍ଦ୍ରା ମିଶ୍ର ଇଜ ଷ୍ଟେଇଂ ଫ୍ରମ ଫିଫ୍ଟି ସିକ୍ସ ଇୟର୍ସ ଆଟ୍ ନ୍ୟୁୟର୍କ ରିସେଣ୍ଟଲି ସି ହାଜ ରିଟିନ ଏ ବୁକ୍ ଇନ୍ ଓଡ଼ିଆ ତାଙ୍କର ଯେଉଁ ସ୍ମୃତି କଥାଟା ସେ କିନ୍ତୁ ଓଡ଼ିଆରେ ଲେଖିଛନ୍ତି ସି ଇଜ ଅ ମେଡିକାଲ ସାଇଣ୍ଟିଷ୍ଟ ରିସେଣ୍ଟଲି ସି ହାଜ ରିଟାୟାର୍ଡ ଆଣ୍ଡ ଆଇ ଏମ ରିଅଲି ଭେରି ହାପି କି ମ୍ୟାଡାମଙ୍କର ବହୁତ ସୁନ୍ଦର କ୍ୱେଶ୍ଚିନ ଟେ ମ୍ୟାମ ନନ୍ଦିନୀ ସାହୁ ଲି ଆନ୍ସର Okay, Dr. Chandra Misra, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for joining and listening to me so carefully. Uh, I was looking at you. You were intently keenly listening to me. I could see that. Yeah, you have a very pertinent question. In fact, when I thought about translating Upendra Banja, that question came to my mind. That how far I'll be able to do justice to such kind of a poet. But then if I don't do it, then Upendra Banja will be read only by Odias. So yeah. somehow I thought, someone has to be instrumental to take upendra banja from odisha to the world i am sure that i am not going to do complete justice to the poet no one can no one can actually think like him write like him but then don't you think that something is better than nothing so <laughs> people should get an opportunity to read uh, that kind of a writer imagine if uh, tagore was uh, uh, read only in west bengal by bengalis then would he have been uh, you know a nobel laureate today yes. because of tagore's translation self translation and also translation by others to english and w b s contribution and so many other english poets contribution to tagore's gitanjali probably it was noticed by the world and today we have a nobel laureate among us yes. i think this is time for we odias as odias also to create those kind of tools through pedagogy and translation and teaching and research so that our outstanding writers and poets from odisha can be taken from odisha to the world to the yes. international platforms and i am only trying to contribute with humble submission and no claim that i will be able to translate 100% of the pandavanja but i am sure that the classical uh, things will be better than me okay take kothare kichi jinsa jodi pare ପିଲା ବେଳୁ ଯେଉଁ ଶବ୍ଦ କିଛି ଥିଲା ଧରା ଯେଉଁ ପ୍ରାଣୀଙ୍କ ଆରତ ଦୁଃଖ ପ୍ରମିତ ଦେଖୁ ଦେଖୁ କେବା ସହୁ ମୋ ଜୀବନ ପଛେ ନରକେ ପଡ଼ିଥାଉ ଜଗତ ଉଦ୍ଧାର ହେଉ ମୁଁ କେବେ ଭାବି ହିଁ ନଥିଲି ଯେ ଏ ପଦକୁ କେହି ଜଣେ ଇଂରାଜୀରେ ଲେଖିପାରିବ ପଞ୍ଚାନବେ ମସିହାରେ ଯେତେବେଳେ ଓଡ଼ିଶା ସମ୍ପର୍କରେ ଏନସିସି ପାଇଁ ଦିଲ୍ଲୀରେ ଗୋଟେ ପ୍ରେଜେଣ୍ଟେସନ କରିବାକୁ ହେଲା ସେଇ ସମୟରେ ମୁଁ ଏହାର ଉଦ୍ଧାରଟା ଦେଲି ଯେ କେତେ ସୁନ୍ଦର ଲେଟ୍ ମାଇ ଲାଇଫ ରଟ ଇନ୍ ହେଲ ବଟ ବି ଦର୍ଲଡ ସେଫ୍ଟ ଏଠି ଲାଗୁନି ଯେ ନିଶ୍ଚିତ ଭାବରେ ଯେଉଁ ଧାଡ଼ି ଲେଖା ହେଇଛି ତାର ପ୍ରାରମ୍ଭିକ ଆବେଦନଟା ଦେଇ ହବ କି ନାହିଁ କିନ୍ତୁ ବାର୍ତ୍ତାଟା ତ ନିଶ୍ଚୟ ଦେଇ ହବ ମୁଁ ଆରମ୍ଭରେ ଯେଉଁ ଶ୍ରୀଗୁରୁ ଭାଗବତ ଠୁ ଆରମ୍ଭ କଲି ତାହା ବର୍ତ୍ତମାନ ତେରଟି ଭାଷାରେ ଅନୁଦିତ ହେଇସାରିଲାଣି ଆଉ ସେ ଭାଗବତ ନୂଆକ୍ଷରୀ ଛନ୍ଦରେ ଲେଖା ହେଇଛି ସମସ୍ତେ ସେଇ ଛନ୍ଦରେ ଲେଖିଛନ୍ତି ଗାଉଛନ୍ତି ଆଉ ତିନି ହଜାର ପଦ ତାର ଲେଖା ହେଲାଣି ତେଣୁ ଆମେ ଯେହେତୁ ନିଜେ ଯେମିତି ଭାବି ପାରୁଛେ ବା ଶୁଣି ପାରୁଛେ ଓରିଜିନାଲ ଲାଙ୍ଗୁଏଜ ସେ ଆବେଦନ ସେଠି ନ ଆସିପାରେ କିନ୍ତୁ ଜଣେ ଯିଏ ଇଂରାଜୀରେ ବୁଝୁଛି ସେ ତାର ଟ୍ରାନ୍ସଲେସନ ଯିଏ ହିନ୍ଦୀରେ ବୁଝୁଛି ସେ ଟ୍ରାନ୍ସଲେସନ ସେ ବାର୍ତ୍ତାଟା ତ ନିଶ୍ଚୟ ପାଇବ but somehow i think i am managing upendra bhanja very well i will discuss with dr chandra and sir professor sanjeev with you and dr palishri with each one of you whoever is willing to discuss with me probably i can also take some inputs from you and improve my translation thank you nandini the information here is manobodha chautisa was the pothi which was behind the creation of odisha as a state because that's Uh, gave the proof that odia is a language right. odia right. um, exactly. has the scripts right exactly, exactly. Right. Yeah. so that was taken and by madhusudan das to england to right. show that we have a language and on that basis our state was created 
Absolutely. And now it's a very, very uh, important and interesting and welcome factor that Odia is one of the classical languages of India. It's such a, such a big respect to all Odias, uh, something to be proud of. Probably we should also utilize that. I am trying to create a chair for Odia literature studies in the national level. I'm sure in new near future, I'll be able to do it. So I'm proposing two chairs, chair for folklore studies and chair for Odia literature studies, uh, Odia as a classical language. Probably uh, I, I will be able to do it in the near future. And in that also, I would need collaboration from all of you. Though I don't write in Odia, I never write Odia poetry. I haven't written my stories in Odia. All my stories are in English. My 17 books are in everything is in English. But uh, Odia is my language, uh, my mother tongue, and I try to translate and take it to different levels of national and international platforms. And I will need support from each one of you. Now I'm doing a book for one international publisher from America, uh, Forgotten Folk Tales from India. So that is where I have translated and transliterated and transcreated stories from different regions of the country. I have taken best stories from the best brains of the country folk tales and uh, that book may become part of uh, uh, the syllabus of an American university. Most oh. of my books are included in the university syllabi. Once a book is published, it goes to a syllabus of a university, only then a lot of people get a chance to read it. Like Dr. Palish Ripatnaik already told me to introduce that one of two of my books are Amazon's best selling books and both the books have been uh, included in the syllabi of a couple of universities. Oh, so great. this book also, yeah, the forgotten folk tales from India that I'm doing now, I'm planning to make it a part of uh, an internal an American university MA syllabus. Great, great, ma'am. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, now we are in the end part. I think uh, Dr. Nivedita Nath will conclude the um, what I say, it's a mind blogging, mind blowing. See, my uh, body is thrilling listening that one Odia girl is doing so much things. I'm really very proud. Uh, Ebe, uh, uh, Professor Dr. Nibedita Nath, uh, continue. And uh, 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 thank you, madam. Uh, uh, at the beginning, I would like to. Uh, Thank, uh, but I words are not sufficient to thank actually uh, Professor Nandini Sahu, Madam, for this very informative and very enlightening lecture. And ma'am, what you are doing, very few academicians actually do that. And uh, your contribution to initiatives of NEP before the implementation of NEP is actually, I mean, much appreciable. And uh, we are very glad to have you today as uh, one of our speakers. And... Uh, uh, and particularly being an anthropologist, I'm very glad to know about your studies on folklore and culture and uh, what you told about also uh, the gender bias in the pictures of the books and schools. I equally agree with that. And you are doing a lot of work, madam, you are, uh, uh, your expertise. I'm really grateful to you and I'm really, I'm unable to believe that how a person can have so much expertise and you have a lot of expertise in all the languages, in the tribal languages, even you are talking and in the literature of folklore and culture. And you have also told that you have brought many changes in the educational system. And uh, that is a very great work. You are doing a lot. You are doing a very great work by bringing interdisciplinarity in the education system. And also you told that you have done documentation of endangered languages, tribal languages. And uh, that's just, just really great. And uh, uh, you are doing a great work. And we are today very much proud and privileged to get you, madam, as a speaker. And uh, I will personally say that we will love to know more about your work. And we will love to listen more about your works in the um, field of folklore and languages. Uh, thank you so much, madam, for giving your valuable time to tell uh, uh, very little about your very big work. And <laughs> thank you so much. And now it is uh, time for the presidential address. And uh, the main reason behind this uh, program of Utishtata, uh, who is none other than our esteemed vice chancellor, who is uh, very keenly monitoring all the journey of the Utishtata for whose untiring effort this uh, program has stepped into today its 68th episode. 
and uh, i'd like to thank here our vice chancellor for starting such a noble venture in a university like uh, uh, at kalahandi and uh, thank you so much sir for your initiative for all your initiatives that you are doing for kalahandi university we are proud to have you as our vice chancellor and now it's time to listen to you sir uh, so now i request our honorable vice chancellor professor sanjay satpati sir to deliver his presidential address sir please नंदिनी एत सुंदर कथा शुणला जो कान मन एसब जोड़ी हो गए सुंदर तरंगायत अवस्था थी बोली मु भावुची तेरे पर जो कथा को आम अन्न भाव कह शब्द जदि मु खोजे से बर्तन ए बर्तन को जो पर्याय मानक विभक्त कर अंतर्तन अवबर्तन और बिवर्तन मनीष बिवर्तन रीर्षक पहुंचा पर प्रकृति आउ कि सृष्टि बोध करना एमती देखिले कह जाए जे पशु उद्भिद ये पूर्णता लाभ कर सारी गला मस पर्यत मुश्वास करूली कितु बर्तमान गोटे एमती गवेषणा मो दृष्टि को आसी जो थे भावुचि ना आहरी बाट अधिक से कौन पर भाईपारे जो बड़े पशु मानक भोकाल कड पर गोटे गवेषणा चली जदि गाई को भोकाल कड दिजिव सी तार दुख कह तार आवश्यकता कह बड़द को भोकाल कड दिगले सी बोधे आ लंगल टाणव ना एमती गोटे भयंकर अवस्था सृष्टि हो पारे किंतु सेमती चली चेष्टा चली गवेषणा चली हे तो पारे तेरे अरविंद कहते मनुष्य हूँ गोटे अस्वाभाविक सत्ता जे कि निजस्व स्वाभाविकता ए जाए पाई ना तेणु से स्वाभाविकता को किए सा कर चिंतन सब कथा सब भावना को तो शब्द रूपातर करे ना कि भावना को शब्द रूपातर करे आय भाषा मान को सी हे तो चरी जाई पारे किंतु प्रत्येक लोकर भावना भिन्न जमी आम सामान कथा को बा गोटे लोक हसुची हसर प्रकार हूँ कोटी कोटी तार कौन शब्द अच्छी लुहर प्रकार हूँ कोटी कोटी प्रत्येक लुह प्रत्येक लुह टू भिन्न ताकू कौन प्रत्येक को शब्द में प्रकाश करी हे बोधे नुहे तेरे मनीष हूँ सचेत आनंदर उपादान गढ़ा आलोक आनंदर उच्छ्वास तार अंतरात्म निहित हो तेणु तैतरी उपनिषद जहाँ कहगला जे इथर मध्य मनीष बास कै से आनंद जदि भरपूर हो न था मनीष हुए तो बंची पारता ना तार प्राणी हूँ एक प्राणवंत परीक्षागार आमर नंदिनी से बेस अनुभव करें चंद्रा मैडम अनुभव करें आम प्रत्येक हूँ गोटे गोटे प्राणवंत परीक्षागार जहाँ भितर प्रकृति मनीष को यानी मनीष एक विस्मयकर प्रयोगशाला जिते बड़े ये लेखालेखी कर मनीषटीए बहुत राति जाए शईपारे ना निद हुए ना से तार मनटा गोटे परीक्षागार पलटी जाए प्रयोगशाला पलटी जाए जो पर्यत से खोजुवा भावुवा चिंता करुवा सूत्रटी न पाई आलोकर सन्धान भितर न आसी से पर्यत से छटपट हो हुए तो से छटपट अवस्था से पहांती देख सका सूर्य देख कि पुणी खोजी चल कौटी जहाँ मुझे खोजुरी गोटे शब्द हुए तो नंदिनी को घंटा घंटा नहीं थी पारे आउ कौटी से पूरा झरणा झरला भले लिखि जा पारे ये गुड़ाक अनुभव रहा तेणु पर स्वत सिद्ध परर्तन ही ये सत्य गोटे दुई हजार वर्ष तलर गोटे उक्ति को जब उद्धार करी 
गोटे नदी में बही जाऊवा पा जो दुई थर छुई पार ना कहीं बाद को जो पा छुईब डाहाण पाद आगे बेलू को से छुवा पाटा भिन्न कहीं बाँ पद को छुवा पा कहीं दूर थी तेणु साहित्य पर धारे जीव जो प्रथम आरंभ करी जो गुरु माने से माने शरीर ही पारती अशरीर ही पारती जमी भीम भई को आसिक दर्शन देले देर तो शरीर ना से आसिक महिला पुरुष दर्शन देले दे एत सुंदर कथा लिखिपारे आम भई को पाखक कहीं आसिले अने का पाक जापारे आमर गला बर्षर पद्मश्री पाई पूर्णमासी जानी से स्कूल को जाई जा पाठ पढ़ी ना कि मुनि ऋषि मानी कथा कौन गंगाधर मेहर चतुर्थ पंचम श्रेणी पर्यटन जा लोक किंतु विभिन्न भाषा पाठ पढ़ी से लेखा लिखिंट आखि कथा श्रुति रही कथा भी पर सूत्र धर ही पारे साहित्यर गोटे गोटे धाड़ी गोटे नूतन आशार उद्रेक कर नंदिनी तुम बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद मैं आज खुशी है जाए रिमार्कोरे शिक्षार व्यवस्था भी परिवर्तन परमर साहित्य भी परिवर्तन एंड पर चेंज निहाती आवश्यक मैडम कहले हेज डन ए लट अफ वर्क एंड लट अफ न्यू वर्क लाइक आई मीन प्रिजर्वेशन अफ दि एंडेजर लांगुएजेस प्रिजर्वेशन अफ दि फ्लक लोर्स फ्लक कलचर तो सब जिन पर निहती आवश्यकता रही समय सहित आम शिक्षा आम साहित्य सब जिन ना जिन उचित सहित परिवर्तन सह ताल उचित तेज हाव ऑलरेडी रिच एट द एंड ऑफ द सिक्सटी एपिसोड नाउ आई रिक्वेस्ट श्री संजीव कुमार साहू असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर ऑफ इंग्लिश टू डेलीवर वोट ऑफ थैंक्स संजीव साहू सर प्लीज समस्त को नमस्कार एट द वेरी आउट स्टेज आई लाइक टू कन्वे माय रिगार्ड एंड ग्रेटिट्यूड टू आवर वाइस चांसलर सर प्रोफेसर संजीव कुमार सिसाथी सर being the curator of this program and chairing all the sessions of this motivational talk series and facilitating the opportunity to listen to the best of minds from different parts of the world thank you very much sir it was one second a wonderful opportunity to listen one of the best minds of the society professor nandini sir i also convey my regards and indebtedness to professor nandini sir for her valuable times she is an acclaimed poet author And, and former director of school of foreign languages uh, indira gandhi national open university for sharing her brain sharing her experiences and stimulating our thoughts and for such a informative you know, talk today she delivered really madam you offered the morals of the teachers who have been you know teaching literature and languages in different parts of the society and those who have been listening today also thank you very much madam for such a wonderful talk today thank you. so i thank uh, The registrar of our uh, university, Sri Pitambara Bhai, for such a wonderful beginning talk at the you know, beginning of the session today, talking about Bhima Bhai and different you no know, contribution of Bhima Bhai to the society. I convey my regards to Dr. Palisri Patnaik uh, for introducing the speaker on the occasion, and uh, I convey my gratitude to Dr. Nivedita Nath Madam for uh, you know, steering the session or coordinating the session in a wonderful way. Thank you very much, Madam. So I convey major. Uh, I convey my thanks to Major Dr. Jaydev Sahu Sir, convener of this program, who have been convening this you no know, 68 session. He has convened already, and co- you no know, coordinating all the events of this program. Thank you very much, sir. The most important part of the program is the listeners, the ardent listeners who have been listening to the different sessions, the students, and all the participants who have been joining this talk and encouraging Kalahandi University to. continue this talk 
I also convey my regards to Lipsa Maharana Madam for you know, singing the songs on different occasions at the beginning of this session. And I convey thanks to all the people who have joined this session. Over to Nivedita Nath. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Sanjeev sir, for uh, delivering the vote of thanks so nicely. Vartaman mo anroth karuchi kumari Lipsa Maharana ko santi patu kariya pahin. लिप्सा अनम्यूट करा अनम्यूट करा सुपर नहीं आई क्या सुना जाऊँ ना सुना जाऊँ ना सुना जाऊँ ना लिप्सा सुबुनी लिप्सा इसे जाने पड़ने सुबुनी 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 हाँ ना ना आप उसी किसी नेटवर्क की तो अच्छे तो पॉलिसी शांति पट करी है सर लिप्सा परी जो शांति पाठ तो नहीं कहीं कहीं कहाँ परी नहीं होंगे आमो बां बां हाथों बुढ़ांग उठो चिन्ना मर डाहन हाथों बुढ़ांग उठो चिन्ना सांगेर भी समान में सर्वे वंतु सुकीना हाँ सर्वे शंतु निरामया सर्वे वद्रानी पश्चंतु माँ कस्तित दुख खबाब होवे ओम शांति 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 प्रणाम थैंक यू मैडम भर्तमान मु अनुरोध करेंगी अमरो अनुरेबल वाइस चांसलर प्रोफेसर संजय कुमार सापति सैम कठारू अनुमति मांगी भी ये आजीरा निवेदिता निवेदिता सही बात किंतु आजीरा जो अध्याय से बोटे बहुत मने इंटरेस्टिंग अध्याय रोमांच कर अध्याय इतिपाई सिक्सटीएट एपिसोड रा भीतर है सिक्सटीनाइन्थ एपिसोड आरंभ है इस अच्छी आगे मैडम आसान कथन है चंद्रा मिश्रा मैडम कोई बे तेरे नो तांकु माने इस थर रा धन्यवाद आर थर रा धन्यवाद मिसे की दवा आगे नहीं रियली सर अट्टू सिक्सटीनाइन दे आस्ती भी निश्चय आस्ती भी अ सिक्सटीनाइन मोपे में बहुत बहुत नंबर कहेंगे ना मोरा सही बरस बाहागर है इतना अरे बाप सुंदर ऐसे जापान में कहीं में तो जाने लगे मुझे जाने नहीं अमु राहिली नहीं बाने बरस है इतना धन्यवाद नंदी की मुझे बहुत इम्प्रेस्ड इतने इम्प्रेस्ड हम कथा सुनने के लिए आउ कहते वाले जगह जगह करियर और सुविधा देवे मुझे बेसिक कहूँ मैं भी सत्पति थी लाभागर पुरुषों तापर मिश्रा हाँ हाँ कथा बोलते हैं पापा अब तो ले रखो आगे सॉरी लाइक धन्यवाद समस्त लोग मत ऐसे स्नेहों दे ही पॉलिस री डाकी ले मुझे संगे संगे दे ही पढ़ी कि आशीली आउ पुण्य आरो आरो सप्ताह को आशी भी आउ तन मन को कहीं ले आशी कारण मोर बेसी हो जी मुँह के अंति मैट्रिक पास करते ली केमिटी केमिटी पढ़ी ली सही कथा डर मुझे जाने जाने को दांजी मुझे लग जी स्टूडेंट मने वधे बेसी अनुप्राणित है बे निश्चय बे हमें हमें आमरो सबूत प्रोग्राम को यूट्यूब रे छाडो चु सत्ता सत्ती चा जाकर प्रोग्राम यूट्यूब रे अच्छी और अस अच्छी भी काली कैसी हाँ सही तो बुझ ले देखिए ना समझ दे आसीब है क्वेश्चन भी पता है आसीब है आसीब है आसीब है अच्छा आसीब है मैं तो अधिस मन चाहिए बे मु कौन है आसन नहीं नहीं पिला चाहूं चाहूं थी पिला नौ चाहूं थी ले और ने माने नौ चाहूं थी ले पर ना मैं इतने बाटे एस्पेक्ट हैं तो हाँ पिला माने आम एनकरेज करें वा किंतु प्लान ए नौ काम हैले प्लान बी नौ हैले प्लान सी नौ हैले जोड़ी दबा सब कु तो इतना मुंह आने वा कुछ चाहूं ची धन्यवाद बहुत मुंह बहुत बापुडी मते बंद कर दियो तो म्यूट कर दियो
ଆଜ୍ଞା ଥ୍ୟାଙ୍କ ୟୁ ସାର୍ ଥ୍ୟାଙ୍କ ୟୁ ମ୍ୟାଡମ୍